this time we're going to make this little casting. It is a gas mixer body. It's used to convert forklift trucks from running on petrol to running on gas. Um, here in Australia, forklifts, if they're going to be used inside, cannot be operated on petrol, but they can be operated on LPG gas. And this is part of the conversion kit. It's made in the gravity die, or what you Americans would call a um, permanent mould. This is the machine that holds the die that makes the part. The die is sitting here in the middle of the machine at the moment um, with two torches sitting on it that will be used to preheat the die. Uh, the machine was in its former life used as a well-known brake manufacturer in Melbourne to make master cylinders, uh, slave cylinders, that sort of stuff. The large cylinders on the machine, that bottom one down is 10 inch and the one here at the end is 8 inch, were necessary because the machine was run, rather foolishly I believe, on compressed air. Air is way too springy, it opens the dies way too violently, and very difficult to control. I've modified the machine somewhat, I've put for start an extra cylinder on up the top here so that I can open a die vertically if necessary or pull a vertical core as, as the needs may be. I've also modified the machine to run on low pressure oil. This is a much, much steadier pull than compressed air gives and it's much easier to control it. You can actually open a die very gently and slowly if you wish. The furnace is sitting over here, loaded up and ready to be lit in the morning. The ingots are sitting just a little bit to one side so that they actually move a bit. They're not jammed in. If you jam them in, when they warm up, there's a chance they'll split the crucible. So uh, it's all ready to go for the morning and we'll leave it now until we have a go then. It's the next morning and now we light the torches on the die to warm it up.
moment the casting is sitting on the bottom core. As soon as I pull that down, out she comes. It's quite a nice looking casting. Bolt holes here and here look well formed. It's all fed well, nice and shiny. Not bad stuff. that's the morning's production I think there's 129 of the things there now all I have to do is cut uh, this bit oops a daisy now all I have to do is cut this bit the feeder off the top of the casting and as it connects inside uh, I have to use a hole saw to do this the removal of the gates with a hole saw here using this little device A little bit of WD-40 to lubricate it.
this is the final stage in the process. The castings now having been uh, degated and uh, uh, placed in a fan forced oven. This is really only a uh, glorified domestic oven. It's a bit bigger perhaps but and I have put some decent controls on it to make certain that it uh, holds temperature properly rather than the existing old controls which are still up here that disconnected. Um, and they'll sit in here at 165 degrees centigrade for seven to eight hours. And this is a rough sort of T5 heat treatment that'll confer considerably greater machinability on the part because it will make the aluminium somewhat harder. And here are some that I prepared earlier, all finished, tea treated, the whole lot. Now with a bit of luck I can get a bit of a shot, I hope, down the little cord bolt holes, which uh, don't have to be even drilled, they come out quite nicely in fact.